Good morning. I'm here with Mike Miller, and we're talking about black powder guns and flintlocks. Uh, uh, Mike, tell me how you got your start in the business. I started uh, when I was 12 years old. I got a, a CVA kit for my dad from Chris, for Christmas, and we built it together. And that wasn't quite enough. So three years later, I got a Foxfire 5 book, and that has Herschel House building a, a Kentucky rifle in five days. Seen that. And I said, I can do that. <laughs> cool. So I went up to my uncle's house, and he has a lot of a, a good tool shop, and took a barrel and a lock that I'd purchased at Dixie and, and a blank that I'd gotten from my dad and made a rifle in a week. Cool. And I won't show it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to show my first stuff either. Not anymore. Uh, how many rifles do you think you've made? Probably around 70. Cool. And that was... Uh, that was 31 years ago when I made the first one, the kid. Okay, you've been at this quite a fair amount of time now. A little bit, yes. Cool. And I, I was a police officer for 20 years in Paducah, where I'm from. And as soon as I retired, I started making this these full time. That was about two and a half years ago. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, do you have favorite uh, uh, schools of rifle building or? I love Southern rifles. They have a little bit of an English influence. The earlier ones have a lot of, a, of German influence to them. Um, but my family was from the South, and the Carolinas and Kentucky and Virginia, and so I, I kind of favor those. Mm -hmm. Recently, I, from some of my customers, I've had to start learning about a little bit more uh, Pennsylvania rifles. And very early Pennsylvania rifles, okay. and it's it's always a challenge to do something different. Okay, I love doing some, every gun. I try to make some kind of challenge. Cool. And uh, one of the last ones I've done was for Mark Baker, and it was a a rifle that I had to make every part except the barrel. I made the the lock, including all screws and, yeah. and yeah. springs and everything on it. Wow. <laughs> and it turned out it worked. Great, great. Uh, I think if, if, if Mark likes one of your rifles, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good endorsement. Not bad. Uh, I could live with that. Uh, do, you, do you enjoy making locks from scratch? Since you did? Yes, yeah. it's a challenge. Uh, I'm sure if I made enough of them, it might get a little tedious. But for mm -hmm. right now, it's still fresh enough that I really enjoy it. Okay. It's, it's really neat to see one that, that works mm -hmm. after you've worked really hard on it. And had a few failures on, on springs or something like that. Okay. What what kind of advice would you give a, a rank amateur builder like me starting off as far as the kind of mistakes I'm most likely to make? Buy every book you can find, buy every videotape you can find, talk to every gun maker you can find before you ever pick up a tool. Okay. And look at every original you can see. Because they're, you'll find that there's a big difference in what the originals were and what the contemporary makers make now. Okay. Um, they're a lot better now. The guns are. That, but new makers don't always catch all of the the artistic values of the old guns. The, the way the rifles float, they may look a little bit awkward to us but when you learn what they were doing what they were thinking they they flow real well okay. a rifle I didn't like at all when I first saw it I really appreciate it now it's one of my favorites okay. because I've talked to Wallace Gussler a lot about it and he owns it right now mm -hmm. and it just it flows now okay. it grows at you when you look at it it does okay cool uh, uh, Next thing I'd ask you about is engraving. Uh, I said some gorgeous engraving on your rifles. Uh, how did how did you come by the skills for that? Self-taught? Well, partially self-taught. Uh, when I tried to engrave uh, uh, several years ago, and it was really a disaster. <laughs> I gouged out some grooves and scratched some little lines, and it was awful. <laughs> And 10 years ago, I met a man uh, named Bill Nagel, and he was a jeweler in Kentucky, in Paducah, where I live. And I met him out on the rifle range. He told me to come over one day to show him some of my work, and I showed it to him. And he smiled and patiently put them aside and went in the house and got two more rifles and handed them to me and said, this is what they're supposed to look like. <laughs> well, they were Ron Hewlett rifles, so okay. they were some of the best that have ever been yeah. made. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, 
I've got to go build a fire. <laughs> I've got some good stocks I need to go burn. Uh, and Bill showed me techniques, and then he introduced me to Ron Ehlert, took me down to his house, and Ron showed me a, a, some techniques that he uses. It's different than what, I, that I'm, what I'm comfortable using, because it's a, a Japanese style where he, he brings the, the chisel back towards him, he taps towards himself. Hmm. Uh, I've never seen any, anybody else do that. It's a neat way of doing it, especially if you're in a tight corner. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, uh, I still wasn't happy with what I was doing, sure. so I bought videotapes on it. That helped some. I talked to Wallace Gussler about it. That helped a little more. Sure. And then I went to the Bowling Green seminar, uh, and Mark Silver sat down oh, yeah. and said, here's how you're supposed to do this. I was, I was going to ask you about the seminar. I, I attended, I don't know, maybe 88 to 92 and, and found out that I really didn't have any skills. And uh, I, I watched guys really grow quickly down there because they had a great instructor looking over their shoulder. So I, I assume you endorse uh, that kind of t- uh, teaching. Absolutely, absolutely I would. That's, the first class I took was Wallace Gussler uh, on drawing out the patch boxes and the carvings, mm-hmm. that really helped because all I was seeing was flat pictures okay. written initially. That was where the books came in. That They were a help to show me yeah. what they're supposed to look like, they're not three dimensional. but not three-dimensionally. Yeah. And now Wallace has got these real rifles in there that he's showing us. He's got slides that are huge, and you can see details that you'll never see in the photograph. Yeah. And sometimes you can't even see it when you're just looking at the gun. Yeah. And he pointed out the details, and he says, you've got to learn how to see what you're looking at. Yeah. And and absorb all the details, mm-hmm. and then you've got to learn how to lay them out. Yeah. And I look at Shumway's books and I see things I really like, but I really don't know what they look like for real. Yeah, you know? and it's uh, like depth of the carving. Uh, mm-hmm. It may only be just a feather thickness mm-hmm. on the edges, mm-hmm. but it's an eighth of an inch or so in the middle. Okay. And a lot of people, one of the things I was doing wrong was I was only leaving maybe a sixteenth of an inch at the most. Okay. And I was getting this flat carving mm-hmm. that I, with no depth to it. Okay. And so last summer, Wallace said, you're going to attend my carving class. Said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, that's cool. And I did. Mm-hmm. And Mark's was in between the first class and, and this last class. Okay. So how many how many classes have you attended now? I've only attended three. Okay. But I, when I hear something that I know that I've got a real problem with, I'll go take the class. Okay. And otherwise, since I've started coming up to Friendship and now I've got the booth, I've got a whole lot of access to these people. Oh, yeah. And I can just go talk to them. Isn't that a great? <laughs> it's wonderful. This is the best thing in the world. Oh, yeah. You can pick their guns up and look at them and, and pick up the originals that they own and look at them. And the access is just incredible. I've never been with Wallace when I didn't learn something. Well, me too. I, I'll talk to him for an hour and I'll tell him, time out. I've got to walk away and absorb this for a minute. I might even go write some stuff down, then I'll come back with my questions on it. Yeah. Because he just knows so much and then it pours out so yeah. deeply that it's really hard to absorb everything. Um, tell me tell me about, uh, I assume you're a shooter or a yes. hunter or a target shooter or something. What, what's your passion in the way of actually using your guns? What do you like? I love to go out and, and just shoot at any time, either hunting or targets. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm noticing right now that I haven't been able to get my glasses worked out where I can target shoot as well as I like Mm -hmm. because it deteriorates. I just, I'm 43 now, and in the last couple of years it's kind of declined a little bit. Been there? (laughs) Yes. And everybody told me, at 40 you're going to start having to get glasses. And now I'm, I'm wearing glasses when I'm hunting. Okay. Just so I can make sure I'm shooting a buck, not a doe, mm-hmm. or whichever way I want to do it. There you go. Have um, you started moving sights, rear sights, away from your eye yet? <laughs> not yet. I, I, I started with uh, at about eight and a half inches with the rear sights, and I'm out to about twelve now. Okay. And it seems that most of my customers like about twelve inches. Okay. So that works. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Um, I'm guessing you build. Well, looking at what you have here, you're, you're building flint round ball guns for the most part? Yes. Uh, hey, somebody just absolutely insists I'll make a percussion. Okay. But And I like shooting percussions. Okay. 
but I don't. I currently don't own any. <laughs> How about uh, smooth bores, fowlers, smooth rifles? Uh, smooth rifles. Uh, I figure if I'm going to put enough time in on making a real nice rifle, that I'm going to put some rifling in it. Mm -hmm. But I've made a few, mm -hmm. and, and they've turned out really nice, and the customers seem to be pleased with them. Okay. Um, I shoot a lot of round balls out of my smooth bores. Okay. And. Yeah. My brown bess is now my favorite squirrel gun because it brings down the squirrel and most of the tree. <laughs> the limb size. <laughs> I know I've hit the squirrel with that one. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, is there anything that you'd like customers to know about you that I haven't asked you or that hasn't come out? I love to work with people. and I, I want to know what you want out of your gun. Okay. And I really like it if you'll, t if you'll be specific on some things and I'll ask you the questions. And okay. I was an investigator for, for 10 years, so I, I've learned a lot of interview techniques. And okay. So I will ask you some questions, and it, it, you may tell me, I want this caliber, knock yourself out, do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But I need a few little details. I need to know about the trigger pull. I need to know how you hold the rifle when you shoot it. Mm -hmm. um, shooters that hold their, their support hand back by the trigger guard usually can use a little bit more drop in the in the Okay. in the stock than one that will hold their hand out near the, the end of the floor. You'd like to see the guy shoulder the gun. Yes, to, and, to and, and I usually will tell them that if I have the opportunity. I'm mm -hmm. getting a lot of email orders and a lot of phone orders, mm -hmm. and so I, I have to ask them those questions. Sure. What do you think about a guy that comes and says, I'd like to have you make a copy of a, such and such a gun in Shumway or something like that? I'll usually tell them I'll make its cousin. Okay. Maybe it's kissing cousin. Mm-hmm. But I won't. I don't like to, to exactly copy anything because either a lot of the old makers were either trained as stockers or engravers or lock makers or barrel makers, but but a lot of them were not trained in all aspects. So the carving may not be up to a quality that I like to put on a mm -hmm. gun, or the engraving may be very crude, and I'm mm -hmm. not. I don't like that. And I'll even though it's charming and it's it's part of our history. Mm -hmm. When I pr reproduce it, I want to reproduce it to the best of my ability, yeah. not the best. You want you and the gun instead of. Okay. Uh, I assume you feel better if somebody says, hey, I had an ancestor in a Lancaster County militia. Yeah. Tell me what you think would or interpret that for me. Right. And, okay, now tell me what time period he was in. Tell me what if you're going to portray that person. Yeah. And now I'll start. I'll, I'd love to go in and do some research okay. to go find out who would have had what gun back at that in that time period. Okay, that sounds cool. That's fun. I, yeah. I just love doing. So that. the the research, the primary source of research is a, is a, an important to you. Yes, and it can be misinterpreted. You can, a lot of people can read into things what they want to see. Mm -hmm. I try to go into it with a I'm stupid. I have no idea. Tell me what you know. Because that's what I used to do in interviews. I would say, tell me what you know, now mm -hmm. tell me what you think about what you know. Okay. Because it's yeah. two different things. Yeah. And there's very little of what you actually know. You can say there were certain makers in this area and certain makers around there, but if that guy was from the county over, his rifle still may be different when yeah. he shows up for mm -hmm. muster. Yeah. I think it's amazing how the, the, you know, the topography in Pennsylvania you know, kind of isolated little groups, and they just seem to kind of evolve. Yes, and, uh, and a lot of the Virginia rifles and Carolina rifles had a lot of uh, influence from, from Pennsylvania because the German makers were situated in, in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and they moved down the wagon road in, okay. into the south, mm -hmm. and they dropped off a little on the way down from sure. through Virginia and into the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. and, so their gun, their influence is like there's a, a beautiful Virginia rifle made by Simon Locke that has a day, a perfect daisy patch box on it, just like a Lancaster <laughs> County. And I, I've heard that for years everybody thought that was a Lancaster County because it had that perfect little daisy on it. I mean, it could be an Isaac Haynes gun. It's, yeah. it's so perfect. Yeah. But oh, it's Simon, cool. Simon Locke. <laughs> that's great. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should ask you. Uh, oh, uh, do you have a website? I have an email address right now. Okay. Uh